Here we are in lockdown number two of COVID, or is it three or four? I can't remember anymore, but you know, you gotta adhere to the rules, which is a perfect transition for this week's lesson because it's all about the rules of programming. Welcome back to Musicom Academy, where we're teaching you how to be a radio PD, be a program director of a real radio station. And uh, today, what I wanted to do is go through the rules of programming, not all the rules, some of them certainly, and definitely as they um, appeared when I got to CKLW and, uh, you know, and put, that, put these rules together with what I had already showed you in the previous lessons. And as we're doing this, I want you to really understand and be clear that everything I'm showing you here in the old way is directly probably more so than anything I've shown you so far, directly correlating to when you're on a computer and you're doing Music Master or Selector. It is the exact same entity, the exact same things that you need to do. And so I'm gonna take you through that and you're gonna get a feel for it. This is again going to be like the Karate Kid Wax on. <laughs> version. Really the main reason I'm doing it, I mean partially so you know it and you understand it, but mainly because I want to show you vi visuals so there'll be things on the screen that I'm hoping that you will remember and you're going, oh yeah, what I got to do now on the computer is that thing. Got it. Totally understand it. I mean that's the main reason I'm going to be doing and telling you this story. So. Back in the uh, early days of programming, you know, and it lasted up well into the 80s. Um, mainly it lasted into the 80s on AOR stations, uh, album-oriented rock stations, basically rock stations. They would take their songs, so let's just say they had 500 songs in their library, 500 gold songs. They would put them all on 3 by 5 cards that you've seen a million times in libraries and, and other things, okay? You know, little cards, and they would write the usual stuff. They would write the record number or the cart number or the file number somewhere where you could physically go get what you needed to play. It was the file code, essentially. Um, they would have that on, then they would have the usual, the title, the artist, you know, the time of the song, the intro, and all of that stuff, all the things you'd need. And the way it would work would be there would be a box of these 500 cards, you know, laying out in the control room on, you know, on the desk. And what you would do is there would be a search level or a dig level. I think on the computers they call it a, a search depth, but it's all one and the same thing. So what a typical one might be would be when it's time to play, you know, one of the, you know, a gold song or something out of this category. And usually there was only one box. I'm sure probably some stations might have had two boxes or three boxes for, you know, three different categories. But anyway, let's just assume there's one box. So we'd say, well, hey, the dig level is 20 cards. Okay? 20 cards in the box. So you'd pick up the first 20 cards, you'd look through them for a song, you'd find one, and then the one that you're playing, you would put that all the way to the back of the box, and the other nine songs you would put back in the front, and you know, next time you'd go through those again. And you would continually do that. Every jock would do that. And that would be the dig level, the search level, whatever. That is directly comparable to what happens on a computer right now because you need to set that up. I believe on some systems they have like an, it's like an auto set. In other words, it'll try to do it for you, but you really should set it for yourself because different category sizes demand a different amount of search level. I'll give you an easy example. Let's say you had a category and there were 500 songs in it. Well, you could easily afford to go 20 to 25 songs deep as you allow the computer to search. No big deal. But if you had a recurrent category, and in the recurrent category there's only, let's just say, 36 songs, you're not going to allow it to go 25 deep before it has to pick something. You're going to allow it to go maybe 4 deep, max, maybe, I don't know, 3, 4, 5, somewhere in that range. You're not going to let it go very far, otherwise it's going to go through the whole category and keep playing the same songs over and over again. Especially if a particular category, again, let's just say recurrence, Let's say the recurrents have 36 songs in it and 10 of them are really up-tempo and the rest are kind of medium-slow. Well, the computer's going to keep trying to hit those, those fast ones, but there's only a few of them. So if it's allowed to come around really quickly, 
it's going to keep playing those same songs over and over and over again and ignore the slow ones and the medium slow ones. They'll never get played. So you have to set the depth level, the dig level, um, according to the size of the category itself. And that's really important. So again, I wanted to you know, go through that before we get into what was going on at CKLW, which was a totally different thing. Um, it was way more advanced than just doing the box with the three by five cards in it. But the concept is the, exactly the same. The concept was that when you go into a category, dig a little bit deep into the category, but you can only go so far and you have to watch out for what you're playing so that stuff doesn't repeat. That's the general concept. CKLW took it a little further because they made it even more restrictive by saying, you on your particular show, 3 to 6 p.m. or noon to 3 or 9 to noon, you can only play these songs the way we're going to allow you to play the songs. So there was even more criteria added on. And that's what we're going to go through today because that is exactly what goes on in the computers and you need to set this up. As we get started on these rules of programming, and there's a lot of them, I'm just touching on these and we'll go through more as we go on. But I need you to understand the basic premise of this, and I'll just put it in non-radio terms. If I was at your house and, you know, I had control of your, you know, your stereo or, or your, you know, Spotify, what would you think if I kept playing the same song over and over and over again? Would I drive you nuts? Probably. That's the basic premise of what we're about to go through. It is separation. Separation in a few different ways. One separation would be if a song plays, any song, if a song plays, how long before you want that song to play again on your radio station? So that's one simple premise. The other is if, say, I was a jock and I was doing afternoon drive on your radio station and I played a song, how long before I was to play it again, or to put it in a bad way, how much would you want to prevent me from abusing playing that song over and over and over again? How much would you want to stop me from playing it and say, hey, dude, you're playing the song too much. I need other jocks in other day parts, other shows to play that before you're allowed to play it. That's another kind of separation. That's what we're about to go through. And that was not covered in the box that I just told you about. They had, the box with the three by five cards, that had no way of accounting for this. The other thing I'm gonna to touch on is um, ratios. And I'll go through that when we get there. And you can do this in a million different ways. And I have done it for hot AC stations. I have done it for AC stations. I have done it for upper end AC stations we where the you know the target is above the age of 40 done it for rock stations done it for urban oldies done it for smooth jazz done it for jazz actually just recently I did it for a jazz station same exact concept same exact use of the computer systems it's just that my criteria kept changing each time as to what I put in these particular categories and ratios let me start out with what's on the screen right now, you're looking at what would be the gold book. I probably should explain the gold book to you. What the gold book was, because everything back then was paper. You know, there was no computers. Computers had not been invented yet, personal computers. So every month, what would end up happening would be the music director of the radio station, Rosalie, Rosalie Trombley, who is a, um, probably the best music director ever, anywhere, anytime, in any century. <laughs> I don't think there's any other music director on the planet that's been invited to the White House at a state dinner. I mean, that pretty much sums it up. <laughs> She's like the best. But it, back in the day, everything was paper. So she and her assistant would have to type up an entire gold book by hand, you know, five or 600 songs in them every month. And what was on the paper is what you're looking at right now. You see those one to 31 across the top? Well, that was the days of the month. So that's what it would look like. And then below, you would see a list of songs. Now, if I've only shown you one here, which is Bob Seger, and this is what will be on the page. So you'd see, see where it says 236? That would be the cart number, or in today's terms, it would be the file number that would be able to go to that song and play it on the air with a digital system. Then there would be the tempo. 
In our time, it was F slash F, which means it started fast, ended fast, or slow, fast, slow, slow, fast, slow, or this one, which was those super up-tempo songs that I was telling you about um, in, in the previous lesson about these would come every 15 minutes. They would be on the quarter hours. FF, that's why the FF was there, super fast songs. And then the intro, title, artist, the usual stuff. That was on all the songs. What was not there was the blue portion where it said, you know, where it's telling you what they are with the tempo, intro, title, artist. That didn't appear on the page because space was at a premium. They didn't want to be typing a whole lot of stuff. What also was not on the page was up in the upper right hand corner, you see those colors. See the colors there? They coincided with the day parts or the shows that were on the air. So six to nine, nine to noon, noon to three, you would use that particular color. Like if you were working nine to three, sorry, noon to three, you'd use a brown magic marker. As you started to play the gold and went into this gold book. And I'll show you what that looked like. So let's move to the second page. This second page gives you a better idea a start of the month um, gold book would look like, although there would be twice as many songs as this. There'd be a lot of songs on the page, which made it really hard to skim, skim with your eyes because you're going to have to look at all these songs, search for a title you know, that you want to play, song artist, that kind of thing, and also be skimming the colors that you're going to see on the next page. Now, taking this page and partially filled it out, and as you look, you can see Stay in My Corner by the Dells. You can see this is what it's, uh, you know, a gold book would start to look like. So just taking the Dells and Stay in My Corner, what ended up happening was clearly when you look down at this, someone that was doing the show between 3 and 6, 6 p.m., the person doing Afternoon Drive, played the song on the 6th. Then the, it wasn't played on the 7th and it wasn't played on the 8th. And then it was played again on the 10th, somewhere on the all night show. Then it wasn't played again, and it wasn't played again. And then on the 12th, it was played somewhere between nine and midnight, and so on and so forth. If you look down to the blue writing where it says 1970 to 1962, these were the separations that I was just starting to tell you about that were on these particular songs. There were no play two day separations for the song itself. And there was no play of two show separations for the person on the air if they were going to play the song. 1961 to 56 was a little bit different still for the show separations. Two shows had to be in between you playing the song again. So what that meant was if I was doing Afternoon Drive and I played the song, I could not play that song again, no matter what. I was not allowed to play that song again unless two other shows, two other day parts played that song. Only then was I allowed to play it again. And that goes on today, th this type of stuff. But what changed was instead of a two day separation on the song, two days of rest, they wanted them to slow them down a little bit more and it ended up being three days of rest. Just out of curiosity, let's go through this on the top. We'll go back to Stay in My Corner and go through it. So the song played on the 6th and then it was two days of rest. That's fine. Played again by Green. That's fine. Two more days of rest, 10th and 11th. That's fine. And then it played again and this time it got played in the purple, which was the 9 to midnight show. So everything's correct to this point. The adherence of show separation and the adherence of the rest periods, the two days of rest in between song plays is totally good. But look at on the 14th. And I did this on purpose, obviously, but someone between nine and noon played that song too early. That was a mistake. They hit that song too early. There should have been one more day of separation before that song was allowed to be played again. It played on the 12th. It should not have been able to have been played by anybody until the 15th. So you can see that Scanning this at the time, now computers will do this for you. There's a lot of stuff running through your head because you're looking at the codes, you're trying to remember all of the day part colors and then doing the math in your head as you're searching for a song over 16 songs per page or whatever they were at the time. So let's go through the next one. Let's see how this one goes. And I don't remember if I made this wrong or, or right. So the song was played, you know, on the second and then it was a lot of days in between of rest. So that's good. I got played by the morning show. Cool. A lot more days of rest again. And then it got played by what was green. It was by the all night show. And that's fine. Two days of rest got played again. Totally good. A whole bunch of days of rest. 
and now it's getting played by the all-night show. This, again, is wrong from what I told you, because if you stare at that, you can see the all-night show played it on the 14th, two days of rest, and then it was played again on the 17th, absolutely 100% fine, and then the all-night show hit it again. Now, that part was wrong because there weren't two shows in between before the all-night show played it again. Now, realistically, and you know, in the real world of listening, really wouldn't have done any damage, but it was breaking the rules. And that's what your eye, when you were on the air, playing two and a half to three minute songs, searching for a song, that's what your eye had to encounter whipping through this stuff. That's fairly, you know, it's pretty intense. Let me go through something else that's on this page, which is the Stay In My Corner. If you see on Stay In My Corner, you see the X there underneath the 10? Stay In My Corner was done by a black artist. Sometimes we had songs like, say, Benny and the Jets and uh, by Elton John. Not a black artist, but that song was loved by and actually started as a hit song in the black community in Detroit. Somebody there started playing it off the album. Other black people totally loved the song. It got on black radio and, you know, that's when the white station started to hit it. We being the first of that, we crossed that over, which is much of the reason why that X is on here. One of the things that we did at this radio station that no other radio station did, if you look at the bottom, back down at the blue where it says X, you see the X, the black X and the ratios, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. we had a ratio of roughly one out of every three songs had to be a black artist. Had to be. That was our minimum. Most of the time it went above that. Usually instead of being 33%, we usually were kicking somewhere around 40%, uh, you know, black songs to white songs. And when it hit 6 p.m., so basically nighttime, 6 p.m. around till 6 a.m., we ran 50-50. That was what the station was trying to achieve because what the station was doing at that time, and this seems almost absurd at the moment, although you can use these ratios for anything, I'm just giving you an, an example of how they were used in this instance. Again, for jazz, I used this exact same concept, but for particular types of jazz songs. That had nothing to do with racial makeup in any way. But in this instance, at the time when you went back to the early 60s, particularly given that there was a race riot in Detroit in 1966 or 67, I can't remember which one, most radio stations did not play the same black artists that we played. And we made it a point on the radio station to cross over black artists to white audiences. That was a huge part of the purpose of the radio station internally. We loved doing that, plus we dug R&B music at the time. So artists like Luther Ingram, Betty Wright, Curtis Mayfield, Funkadelic, um, even Edwin Starr with SOS, Stopper on Sight, way before he ever did War, which was, uh, I think he did Stopper on Sight in maybe 1965. War came in 1970. By then, the race barrier had pretty much been already broken, and the prime station to do that was CKLW. It has been written about in countless n uh, newspapers, New York Times, the LA Times, Washington Post, 60 Minutes, 2020, even a movie about it, cracking the race barrier. And that's why the radio station had such a really close relationship with uh, Motown Records, Invictus Records, Westbound Records, uh, which who had some white artists, but primarily black artists, Detroit Emeralds. The radio station, kept these ratios going so that it would always be way more R&B leaning, way more, than a typical white station anywhere in North America. And that's the way it was for, ooh, I would say probably almost a decade. That's what we did and that's why this X is on there. Um, I guess, you know, probably today this seems a little racist, but it was actually reverse race, you know, racial thing, because we were actually trying to make sure that songs were played, not not played. So let's go to the next final page, and I'll give you, a, you know, an entire page of what this thing looks like. Okay, last page on this, and, uh, you know, I think hopefully by now you kind of get the get the full idea, you, you know, just looking down, you, you can take your time on this, maybe if you might want to just stop the video and go through and see if you can pick out mistakes on these, or no mistakes, given what you know. Take a look at this, and um, I'll spend a little time on this. I'll just leave it on the up on the screen for you know, for, you know, a few more seconds than normal, and then I'll give you a summation of this. All 
Okay, just put it on the screen just so you can see it and you can have an idea. Days separation was the number of days that the song had to be rested by all shows, no matter what, before being allowed to play again anywhere. Show separation was the number of shows or day parts, you know, it's kind of an interchangeable word, that the song had to circulate through before it was allowed to be played within the same show or day part again. You want other shows to play it in between before he or she was allowed to play the song again. One last thing to think about, and that's the math of this. If you look at these numbers here as if they were the days of the week, and on the first a song played, and then there were three days of resting, like one of those older songs, so one plus three is four. That means it, the next time it could be played would be on the fifth. And then if you did that again, three days of rest played again, it would be played on the ninth and 13th and 17th, 21, 25, 29. In a typical month, the maximum amount of times that a song in that category could play would be eight times. It couldn't play any more than, than that, unless somebody broke the rules. And that's three days of rest. If you drop it down to two days of rest, then it would be song plays on the first of the month, second and third are days of rest, it plays again on the fourth. Fifth and sixth are days of rest, it plays again on the seventh and so on and so forth. The maximum amount of times that it can play is 11 times in the month. The math on this matters in that that's how you control your music systems. That's how you control the play of the music. And this seems sort of bizarre at the moment, probably to you because you're going, well, why would I want to control stuff that much? The reason that you want to do that is you want to be able to have, I believe, at least this is how I did it. You want to know exactly what's going on so that as you're listening to your radio station and you want to change something, you want to, you want to adjust the controls, you want to take one of the levers and move it a little bit, you want to know exactly what each one of those things did so that if you wanted to grab one and pull it back to change the sound, you can do it. It's really easy to fix a radio station. Your vision of what you hear in your head and what you want your radio station to sound like, you know what to go to to adjust and you know exactly what your adjustments will cause. As always, we'll be up for the next lesson. Uh, you're always trying to put a lesson up at least um, one week at a time. You know, maybe I can get two out in a week, but for sure just one. So. Um, you know, if you like the course, you know, I hope it's helping you out. Certainly subscribe and um, we'll, we'll see you on the next lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. See ya.